Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Game Max Strike mechanical keyboard. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so today we're going to be taking a look at the Game Max Strike. This is a UK layout keyboard for those of you in the United Kingdom. Um, I'm actually not sure if they do one for the US. That's something I'll actually have to find out and put in the links below. But anyway, after the review I did about a week or so ago of the Game Max Click, which is a mechanical feeling keyboard, got a little bit of backlash about that, I'll be honest with you. And some people are just, it's mechanical or it's not mechanical. There's no in between. So luckily, Game Max, feeling a little bit sorry for poor old Mike's unboxing, sent me out the Game Max Strike mechanical keyboard for me to try out. And also, this is actually a really cost effective option if you are looking to upgrade your life and to get a mechanical keyboard. Now, this uses the really inexpensive Otomu red switches. Now these are designed as kind of clones, if you will, of the Cherry MX switches. So if you're a fan of Cherry MX reds, this is gonna be right up your street, but it's gonna cost you an awful lot less. On average, a Cherry MX red keyboard, anywhere between 50 to 75 pounds, maybe slightly more. This using the cost-effective Otomu switches actually comes in in the UK at just under £40. So quite a saving and the saving that you could possibly put towards buying a new game release, something like that. So anyway, that's enough waffle. Let's have a look at the spec of this keyboard and see what it can do for you and see what it features. So as my brain is pretty much like a sieve, I'm actually going to read the specifications of the box just so I don't get anything wrong. And if there is anything wrong, well, it's Game Max's fault, not mine. So first of all, it's a USB keyboard. It's available in black. The LED color is RGB. So as you can probably see already, the keyboard has completely individual RGB lighting per key. So you can set it up and have it within reason, however you like. There's various options, but we'll go through that a little bit later. Um, you've got 105 keys, and I know that is absolutely correct because I did actually count them for myself. The key travel is four millimeters. The key force is 50 grams, give or take. It does say plus or minus 10 grams, so there may be a little bit extra and a little bit less as you go through the keyboard. That is one of the downsides of uh, clone switches, that sometimes you may find that they're not all manufactured to quite the high standards you'd expect from the German cherry switches. But again, you are saving a lot of money, and realistically, will you actually notice that very slight difference in key pressure? Some of you obviously will, but the majority actually won't. So it's good for 50 million keystrokes, so that should last long enough. The cable, actually, which the cable on it is actually a nice braided cable. It's not a detachable cable, which some people do actually like, but it's a, it is actually just a plain black braided cable, so it will fit in quite discreetly on most desktops. The cable itself is 1.8 meters long, so that's about six foot. Uh, dimensions of the keyboard, it's 439 by 200 by 40.7 millimeters. The net weight with the wrist rest, now there is actually a wrist rest which is detachable, and this is actually quite a, a, a lightweight wrist rest to be fair, but with the wrist rest, the entire keyboard is 1.22 kilograms or kilos, um, and without it, I think it's just slightly over 1.1 kilos. So again, not very much weight to that whatsoever, but quite handy and actually got quite a nice feel to it as well. Operating system support, you're looking at Windows 2000, Windows XP, Windows ME, Windows Vista, Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10, and Mac OS X. Now that refers mostly to things like your function keys along the top. Obviously, if you've got a USB device, there's a very strong chance that this will work with it for the general key layout. So moving around to the front of the box, as you can see on the box is saying it's got a red switch, which is linear and silent. So unlike the blue switches, which generally tend to have that uh, pronounced kind of click halfway through. This is a linear switch, so it goes straight to the bottom without any real resistance or click resistance. Um, and it's, it's described as being a silent switch, but the switch itself may be silent, but when it's got a keycap on it, it's far from silent. So it's a, yeah, a little bit of a weird one that, but they are classed as a, a silent switch technically. Um, so mechanical red switch gaming keyboard, RGB backlit keyboard with 16.8 million possible colors. I haven't counted those. Uh, it's got 12 multimedia functions, so that's the keys along the top. So if you press the function key in a combination with these, you've got all your usual suspects like play, pause, uh, volume up, down, mute, uh, rewind, fast forward, email, 
your home screen, my computer and your calculator, all that kind of stuff. It's got N key rollover, so the entire keyboard has got rollover features, so that's all well and good, so no ghosting. And like I said, they're Windows and Mac compatible. Moving on to how you actually operate a keyboard. Now, obviously, to operate a keyboard, you just type and things appear on your screen or in your email or whatever it may be. But there are actually individually printed things, and these are dual printed keys, which if that means anything to you, let me know in the comments because I don't know what it means. But from what I can tell, it means that the keycaps are just very well made and are uh, very difficult to actually remove the kind of the top off so they always look clear crisp and sharp anyway getting back to it so if you uh, for some reason forget what the keys do and you're not too sure from the layout on the keyboard you also get this little standalone leaflet which you can go through and see what everything can do so you've got the multimedia functions all listed out you've got the specifications listed out and you've got your led control keys now you've actually also got a gaming function key so what you can do is if you press the function key and the w key then that actually transfers your uh, WASD to the um, arrow keys. So depending on what games you play, you may find, like for me personally as a left-hander, I actually prefer to use the arrow keys rather than the ASDW, personal preference, but again, there is an option which is there for you. Uh, other options are the Windows key lock. So if you press the function button and the Windows key, then you get the lock. And also, so that you know that the lock is on, so you don't start freaking out when your Windows key doesn't work, there's actually a handy illumination at the top which shows you your Windows lock is on. Also, that doubles up with other features as well. So you've got your number lock, which is pretty much uh, on every keyboard, your caps lock button, and your scroll lock button. I'm actually saying that some wireless keyboards don't have those buttons because they obviously take up batteries and stuff like that. So yeah, they're basically there. Now, some people may or may not like the font on this keyboard. It's quite a... Um, quite a modern style font so some people may like it some people may not I will be putting some close-up images in the video and also if you uh, go to the links you can see it from game Max's site get a real good close-up the font may not be to everybody's taste it does take a little bit of getting used to if I'm completely honest um, I personally prefer a much clearer font but this is kind of like a, a stylized font so bear that in mind if you're considering purchasing this so moving around to some more practical features before we go into the LED, um, you've got the removable wrist rest as we discussed earlier. Now this has got rubberized feet in three places at the front and it's got the kind of snap to fit clips on the front and it does actually snap in with one heck of a force. So I'm not going to do it now because it really is a headphone user's nightmare if you hear the click, but it is actually, it's quite comfortable if you're the sort of person that likes using the wrist rest, excellent. If not, obviously leave it in a box, forget all about it. But it has got those nice rubber pads on there to stop it skipping around all over the desk, even if it is the kind of IKEA desk like this. That's these sort of shiny surfaces where things do have a tendency to float around. So moving around to the back of the keyboard. So on the back of the keyboard, again, got the rubberized feet, which are at the bottom, quite nice thick padded feet. And also if you are someone who prefers to have the keyboard in the flatter position there's also a really nice thick rubber on the top here as well so you've got rubber in all four corners to stop it again skipping around the desktop but if you do like the feet to be up the feet can be flipped up and again another nice thing to see it's not just a piece of plastic there is actually rubber that goes all the way around that foot to absorb any sort of bounce and that kind of thing so that was actually one of the first things i noticed when i flipped the legs up it actually does feel like a quality product and you can almost hear you can hear the kind of the, sp the springs inside there echoing through this metal, which is actually quite a, a solid design. So really nice. Uh, moving on to the cable again, as we discussed earlier, braided cable. And they've got options for three different uh, exit locations. So left, right, middle. So depending if you've got the keyboard keys, or sorry, the, uh, the keyboard legs down, you can put it in like that. So it can lay completely flat and not skip around on the desk. So that's all really good. If you maybe you've got your keyboard and monitor on a slight angle to where you are, or the wiring suits, then you can put the wire along down through the channel and then bring it out through the end, which is not easy to do in reverse. So there we go. So that's the wire on the end. So if you've got some kind of setup where you need it to be off to one side or other, then you're completely catered for. So that's pretty much all the features of the keyboard. The only thing really left is to show you the RGB functions, which actually isn't the easiest thing to show on a camera. So I will do my best to go through them. So hopefully you can see those okay. If not, I will be putting up some, uh, some B-roll footage after so you can see it a little bit better. 
Now, in this slightly bright studio, it's difficult to see the differences in the actual lighting uh, luminosity or brightness, but uh, we'll do what we can. So press the function key and the brightness buttons are the up and down. So if you press those, you can go through different brightness levels. Again, in this particular environment, it doesn't look very different at all. Um, the left and the right buttons control the speed. So if you've got some kind of uh, movement in the keyboard LEDs, then you can change the speed of those. So that is on the slowest. So that's almost stopped. And if you want to speed up, you can have it so it scrolls through much faster. Again, hopefully you're, uh, you're picking that up okay. Uh, other options, so function, and you've got the delete key and the insert key. So the delete key is kind of like, it's got the sort of rotation arrow on there. So that goes through the different cycles of colors. And the one above has got a cog again. So that's kind of like your settings. So we'll quickly go through those. If you press the function key and press the settings. So that changes your different lighting style. So that is actually my personal favorite. I, I really like this. This is like the, the raindrop effect, which actually blends in amazingly well with my RGB PC in the background with the uh, addressable RGBs because it's kind of doing that randomized thing. So when this is actually with that next to each other, they do actually look really, really good. So I really do like this. Again, similar to the Rio Toro keyboard I reviewed a little while back, the raindrop effect on that was very similar, but this is a kind of less than half the price of that keyboard for a very, very similar experience. Uh, so moving on to another keyboard layout, oh, sorry, another style. So if we press uh, function and insert again, so then you get your static colors. You can go through and change all your static colors. Then you get like the kind of snake effect. Then there's the uh, unicorn puke again. And that is just a, a per key lighting. So when you press a key, it lights up. And if you want it, at the moment that's green. So if you press the function button and the uh, rotation button, that will change it. So we've got blue, then we've got yellow. Actually, let's show you on a slightly different layout so you can see that. So there's one of the effects. So if we now press the function key and the kind of the rotation one, to we can change through the colors. So it's actually pretty simple and straightforward uh, to do or to select whatever you want on the keyboard. And the lighting actually looks really nice. The keys are actually raised just enough so that you see a nice bit of light bleed through, but without it being kind of dazzling or uh, blinding. I have actually used this. I was using it with my streaming PC behind. It's been there for a little while now, which is why I've taken a while to review this because I want to actually give it a good run to see what it's actually like. I was using it on there, it's absolutely brilliant. For gaming, it's actually a really nice keyboard. Some people might prefer other keyboards, like maybe with the blue switches, maybe even the browns. Uh, browns for me are more for a typist in my opinion, but again, everyone's got their own opinions about keyboard switches. For me, the reds work really well for gaming, especially for first person shooter gaming. They're a little bit lighter to, to actually press, and they're less hard work than some of the more stiffer switches like the browns or the blacks. So for me, this works really well. Anyway, let's move on. So other colors, so again, you've got the rainbow selection and you can change that as well. So it scrolls, but you get the general idea. It's an RGB keyboard. There's lots of different things you can do with it to make the lighting look different. And in fact, even when I've been messing around with it myself, I've been, oh, I never noticed that before. So as you go through the different combinations of lighting, you will definitely find something that either interests you or um, that you want to keep on using. So that pretty much wraps up my uh, review of the GameAx Strike keyboard. Hopefully this has been in informative for you. Again, it's a keyboard review. Without actually getting your hands on it, it is actually a really difficult thing to kind of get across to you how tactile the keyboard is. For me personally, again, I've, I'm comparing this with the Cooler Master Master Keys Lite set which is in the same sort of price point approximately. You're looking about 40 pounds for that, for the keyboard and the mouse. That isn't a mechanical keyboard. It is a membrane based keyboard with a mechanical feel. Uh, also comparing it with the previous one, the Game Max Click, which we used previously, which again felt very nice, but it's not, it does feel very similar. Now I've kind of used the mechanical keyboard a little bit more. I can see there is a very subtle difference. And actually in some instances in gaming, it is a very specific dif difference. I know that's really, really convoluted way of saying it, but essentially, yeah, people who go on about mechanical keyboards, they are onto something. It doesn't mean you can't game on a normal keyboard. A lot of people do, and I'd imagine there's millions and millions of people 
in countries that are quite happy to use their standard Microsoft internet keyboard or some five pound cheapy off of eBay. But for those of you who take your gaming a little bit more seriously and you like the look of RGB and you like mechanical switches, then maybe this is the one for you. So I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. If you've got any comments, questions or suggestions, feel free to stick them in the comments section below and we'll catch you again in the next video. Thanks for watching.